How's it going, YouTube? I am Simply Frank with Elegante Entertainment. And in this video, I am going to show you how to repair your LED up lights. Now, I myself am a wedding DJ here in the Houston area. So from time to time, I see myself having to repair some of my ultra up lights. And uh, in this video, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do. All right, so let's get started. First, we wanna set the light to the right e, uh, menu option where we can see all the different colors. This particular light has red, green, blue, amber, white, and ultraviolet. And we're gonna test this light right now. We're gonna set it to channel or menu option one so we can see the red is missing three. Green is gonna be fully lit. Blue is going to be fully lit and then we're going to see that white is missing three lights as well. Amber is going to be missing three lights that don't turn on and so is ultraviolet. So let's get started assembling the unit right here. Doing an initial test of two uh, physical test, and we can see that the top cover has been damaged, probably due to a, fall, uh, a drop of this light. So we remove the top eight screws. Then we're gonna disconnect the assembly from the main board. The assembly has five more screws that are that we need to take off, so we can remove the top cover. And then we're gonna see that it has a connection for the IR receiver on the top, so let's get rid of that. Uh, we're gonna take the lenses and put them off to the side. And then we also have five standoffs that are on top that's gonna hold the top plate to the LED heat sink that's on the bottom. So once we remove these five uh, standoffs, we're gonna see the bottom heat sink. And now let's just dust it up a little bit and let's get started. All right, let's get started testing the diodes. This particular light has six LEDs and each LED is made up of six different colors. Blue, green, red, white, UV, and amber. Uh, to do that, we're gonna set the multimeter to the diode setting and we're gonna check each lead on the diode by putting the black lead on the negative side and the red lead on the positive side of the diode. Now each set of legs is uh, for one color. So when we put the LEDs on either side of the diode, it should illuminate one color. Now this is a general checkup to make sure every LED lights up and every color lights up. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our board on the preheat station and preheat the underside of the board to 275 degrees. While we wait, let's go ahead and come up with a numbering system. So when I say LED number one, LED number two, LED number three, you know which one I'm talking about. And this is going to be very easy because we're going to start with all the where all the cable start meets or comes in and go to the left hand side and just go LED number one in a clockwise uh, orientation. And LED number six is always going to be in the middle. So once again, this is just for future reference. So now that we have the preheat station all the way up to 275 degrees, and this is just going to preheat the underside of the board so that whenever we do put the solder soldering iron on the LED leads that the solder flows smoother. So in this in this step all we're going to do is reflow every lead or connection to ensure that every every one of those leads is making a good connection with the board. We're also going to check for solder joints or shorts where so or where solder is making a connection between two leads. So we also don't want any shorts between these leads. Uh, that's going to also affect the overall outcome. And once we are finished with this step, once we go through over all the LEDs and make sure the all the LEDs are correctly soldered onto the board, we're just going to clean off all the remaining flux and visually inspect all our joints. All right, it's time to test our work to see if we fixed any of the light. So we're gonna go through all the colors and see that not all the white, now all the white LEDs are working correctly. But now amber and purple are not turning on. And well, let's bring up our first video just to show you again that we started with all, only three white LED lights turning on, but we also had three amber and three purple. And for some reason that has 
stopped from working. Okay, we want to check all the diodes again one by one and do another visual inspection. By probing all the LEDs, we can see that LED number six, the one in the middle, has a short. When we put the multimeter on the pins one and two, left to right, two colors light up instead of just one. And that means there is a short somewhere. So what we're going to do is set this back on the preheat station and go through another reflow process. So let's put it back on here. Once it's reset, we're going to reflow all the leads. We want to make sure that there are no shorts and all the LEDs have enough solder and are creating a great contact with the PCB board. Always remember to add enough flux for a much better spread of the solder onto the leads. It will make your job faster and avoid damage to your electronics. Once we're done with this reflow of all the LEDs, we're going to clean it up and connect it back to the light for another round of testing. And right away, we can see that the three amber LEDs are back on. We can also see that all the UV LEDs come on. However, when they do come on, they have a, a hint of amber on them, which is not the way they should be. We can also see that when the three amber LEDs are on, the lights that are off are passing voltage to what looks like green and red. This can be one of two things. Either we have a bad LED, which is most likely the case, or we have a short somewhere. Now with the power on, I looked to see if I could find any voltage differences or anything unusual, and I did not. With the power off, I want to see which of the LEDs are not coming on by just placing the multimeter on the LEDs. Amber, UV, and white do not light up as bright as red, green, and blue, so that made it a little bit more difficult. I also did notice that LED number two was not turning on for amber, so let's replace the LED. To remove the LED from the board, first we have to preheat the bottom of the LED board to 275 degrees with our preheat station. The bottom of these LED boards are made of aluminum, so if you try to do this without the preheat station, you will have a much harder time removing the LEDs. Since aluminum will absorb all of the heat of your soldering iron, your LEDs will not get hot enough. When you try to remove them, you will most likely damage the board by pulling up the traces. Now, if you don't use a preheat machine and try to use a hotter soldering iron, then you risk damaging the LEDs from too much heat. Once the bottom of the LED board is heated to the correct temperature, start by putting plenty of flux on the LED leads. Add some solder to the tip of the soldering gun. This helps because fresh clean solder will flow much better and get hot quicker, which will make it easier to remove the LED. Use small tweezers to help pull on one side of the LED at a time until all six legs are unsoldered. Then unsolder the other side of the LED. Be very careful when removing these LEDs as you do not want to pull a trace. As you can see, once one side comes off, it is easier to bring out, take off the other side. Once you're done, clean up the mess, add more flux, make sure you have the correct orientation on your LED and place it on the board. Solder one corner so that the LED does not move. And then solder another corner to keep it stable as you solder the rest of the pins. If you use plenty of flux, the process of soldering your LED back on the board is a lot easier. When putting the LED back on the board, make sure that all the LED leads are perfectly placed over each of the traces on the PCB board, as you do not want any of these LED leads to touch the adjacent LED trace. So now we want to test all our work. We're going to bring in the video from uh, the initial test. And this is going to show us that to begin with, we only had three lights, three red lights working. All green worked, all blue worked, only three whites turned on, three amber, and only three UV lights turned on. So let's plug in our board. And when we are on the red setting, we can see that the LEDs are still passing voltage to other colors. This means that there is another short or bad LED on the board. 
Now, let's do a real quick recap. We have already fixed white, amber, and UV. All the amber lights turn on, but the board is still not 100% ready. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in another light that is working correctly so we can test this board on that light. If the board works correctly on that light, that means that there is an internal problem with the LED light. If we got the same results, that means that there are still a few more things wrong with this LED board. Since the colors are still not where we want them to be, uh, we're going to try to see if we can find anything else that is clearly visible. And upon further testing, I see that the red is not getting any voltage, but only on half of the LEDs. So let's add a jumper wire from LED number five to LED number three. So let's draw a diagram so you can see how the lights are connected on the board. Remember that, remember that each LED has six colors. So there are six traces going to every LED, one for each color, red, green, blue, white, amber, and UV. Right now we're only working with the red color as to avoid any confusion. And so we can have, don't have all the six traces on this paper. So starting with LED number one, we are going from positive and then we're going to connect the first three LEDs in series and then it's going to go to the negative side. Now we are going through LED number six, but we are not connected to it. So we show that with a jumper on the other side. And uh, well, what I noticed is that I forgot to add all the labels for positive and negative. So let me do that real quick. And on the other side, we're going to go uh, from the negative starting with LED number five. Then it's going to go to LED number four and then back to LED number six, which is going to close out that series. And remember that we are adding the jumper from number five to number six because there is a break in the voltage and that's why half of the LEDs are not turning on. To have a better representation, let me draw all six LEDs as you would draw them on a typical schematic. And you're going to see easier why just disconnecting one wire is going to turn off all six, all three LEDs. Also, same thing happens when one of the LEDs is not working with any color. If one LED doesn't work, it turns off the rest of them because it does not complete the series. All right, let's turn on, turn it on and test it. And right away, we can see that the LEDs are still not working correctly. When I touch LED number three, we can see that it fixes the green, but it's not working correctly. What we do want to see is if we did get the red LEDs working. Going through the colors, we can see that amber is still not working completely and UV is still not working completely, but red does seem to be fixed. Upon further testing, I noticed that LED number five was not responding correctly. So let's go ahead and replace LED number five. Take a look here because even if you have your preheat station and add flux and add more solder, if you are not careful, you can still damage the board. Notice what happens to the upper left lead on LED number five. I was not careful and didn't heat it up correctly or didn't the soldering iron did not reach it. So whenever I did pull it up, it did damage the board. Luckily there was a little bit of trace left over where I could solder it back on and the LED was working perfectly right after this. So please be very careful. Once you damage these boards, you cannot fix them easily. You're going to have to add a jumper from one LED to the next connection. All you have to do is just follow the trace. So let's put on the LED back on the board and let's get to testing.
So we did a few more tests, moved some stuff around, and we also noticed that LED number four was not working correctly. So let's go ahead and put this thing back on the preheat station and replace LED number four. And here is the sped up version of me replacing LED number four. Now, if you want to go through the instructions, the first LED, we went over all the instructions on how to remove these safely and how to put them back on correctly. We also determined that LED number three was not working correctly. So we're going to go ahead and replace it and then get back to testing. All right, let's get this thing back on here in testing. And right away, we can see that all the green lights are looking the same and seem to be fixed. No red seems to be going through them. However, when we go to amber and UV, they seem to be the same color. So that means there's got to be a short somewhere on the board. So let's find that short, fix it and get it back to testing. So looks like we're almost there. Okay, looking at this, you can see the upper right hand LED, which is LED number three, the one we just replaced, has a blob of solder across the top two left pins. So that means it's making a short across the UV and amber LEDs. So let's go ahead and take that short off and get it fixed. And we're gonna put it back connected and turn it on again so we can see if that fixes the problem. And turning the fixture on, we can see right away the, the UV and amber are no longer crossed together. So just removing that blob uh, it seems to have done the problem. And that was just an oversight on my, on my end. I left that little blob just by accident. But now we can see that all the colors are working correctly. We go through all the colors one more time just to make 100% sure that we are good to go. And it seems like we are good to go. So let's go ahead and assemble this light back together and get it back completely assembled so that we can do the final test and get it back to the client. Okay, it's time to reassemble the light completely and give it a couple final tests. Right now, we're gonna put all five standoffs. These standoffs hold the PCB to the aluminum heat sink that helps spread the heat of the LEDs so the LEDs don't get too hot and stop functioning. Once we have the, the heat sink secured, we're gonna put the six lenses that go on top of the LEDs. Now these are the lenses that spread out the beam of the LEDs and make it wider. These, I believe, are either a 30 or 45 degree spread. Up next, we have the top panel. This is just to secure everything in place and give it a final appearance. This is held by five screws. Next, we're going to flip over the LED fixture and connect the infrared or IR receiver cables to the IR board. Then we're going to connect all the cables inside the LED light, the LED voltage cables, as well as the IR receiver to the board. Do a quick test of all six colors, make sure that everything's working fine. Now we're going to put all eight screws back on the top of the fixture to secure everything back in place. And once we are done with this, we're going to give it one final test to make sure none of this uh, jolted or moved or disassembled any of the LEDs. So let's go ahead and do go through the six colors quickly and make sure that they all are working correctly. All right, looks good, good to go. And last thing is I'm gonna put a label on this light on the bottom just to see what date I fixed it and what we did to this light.